In this video we'll take a look at a piece of vintage electronics, the Heathkit HD 1410 electronic keyer. Morse code or CW is a method of communication used in amateur radio. Commercial use of Morse code ended around the beginning of the 21st century and the mandatory requirement for knowing Morse code was dropped from international amateur radio regulations in the early 2000s. Despite that, it continues to be a popular form of communication in amateur radio and offers a number of advantages over voice and other forms of communication. While traditionally sent using a hand key or straight key like this one, the speed and accuracy when using a straight key is limited. It can be tiring for the operator and extended use can even lead to injuries like carpal tunnel syndrome. An improvement was the bug which used two switches and could send dots automatically when one side was pressed. These were entirely mechanical devices. By the 1950s, electronic keyers were developed that could send both dots and dashes automatically. Some of the earliest designs used vacuum tubes, then later transistors, and then integrated circuits. Modern keyers typically use microcontrollers, are small and low cost, and offer features like storing messages in memory. Heathkit introduced their first keyer kit, the HD10, in 1965. It sold well and was on the market until 1974. I've covered this unit in another video. In 1974, it was replaced by the HD1410, the subject of this video. Smaller and offering more features, it also supported iambic operation. A key feature of modern keyers is the so-called iambic mode. Pressing the left paddle sends dots, pressing the right sends dashes, and pressing both sends alternate dots and dashes. This takes some getting used to, but means that fewer actions are needed to send characters. For example, the character C requires four presses with a non-iambic keyer, and only two with iambic. Sold from 1975 through 1984 at a cost of around US $59.95, the HD 1410 was sold as a kit. Major features include operation from AC power or 12 volts DC, a speaker with adjustable side tone, support for positive and negative transmitter keying, receiver audio input, headphone output, and external hand key input. It could be wired for one of two speed ranges, 10 to 35 words per minute and 10 to 60 words per minute, and for right or left-handed operation. In 1981, Heathkit introduced the SA5010 Micromatic keyer, which was smaller and used a microprocessor, allowing it to support more features. It and the subsequent SA5010A were sold until 1991, almost up to the time that Heathkit exited the kit market. The HD1410 is a compact electronic keyer with built-in AC power supply, mechanical paddles, side tone oscillator, and speaker. It matches the styling of the Heathkit SB and HW series. It can be wired for two speed ranges and right or left hand operation. It features iambic operation with fixed dot dash weighting and dots and dashes are self-completing. The paddles are adjustable for tension and travel. The side tone operates through an internal speaker or headphone jack and has adjustable volume and frequency. It can be powered from 120 volts AC, 50, 60 hertz, or from a 10 to 14.5 volt DC external power supply or car battery. It can key transmitters with positive keying up to 300 volts DC and 200 milliamps and negative 200 volts DC 10 milliamps maximum. A hold switch is provided for transmitter tune-up. The control on the front right controls power and side tone volume. A red neon lamp indicates AC power is on. The left control adjusts the keyer speed. Pulling it out keys the transmitter on for tune-up purposes. The left paddle is normally dots and the right dashes. The case is weighted and has rubber feet so it will not move when the paddles are operated on a desk. On the rear panel, the AC power cord attaches at the right, or you can connect DC power to the external 12 volt connector next to it. A quarter inch headphone jack is provided. Inserting headphones silences the internal speaker. 
if you feed receiver audio to the receiver audio jack, it can be heard in the headphones during receive. The keyer output is provided on a phono jack. It can be positive or negative keying. The external key jack supports connecting an external hand key. The keyer was sold only as a kit that came with all parts including jacks and plugs, a nut starter and IC lifter, and a very detailed assembly and operation manual. The top and bottom covers are removed by loosening the screws on the sidebars. The unit is all solid state. Most circuitry is on one single-sided phenolic silk screened printed circuit board. The circuit uses five 7400 series TTL ICs, eight transistors, and 11 diodes as well as miscellaneous resistors and capacitors. External to the PCB is a small permanent magnet speaker, the controls, neon pilot lamp, jacks, fuse, and holder. Paddle tension can be adjusted by using this set screw on the side and spacing adjusted by moving this black lever. Some 120 volts AC is exposed inside when plugged in, for example around the fuse. As per the warning on the back, you should be careful to power the unit off when adjusting paddle tension and travel to avoid getting a shock. The high voltage AC portion of the printed circuit board under the power transformer has insulating paper for safety. One transistor has a small heat sink. The side tone frequency is set internally by a trim pot which is accessible from the bottom or top when the cover is off. Unlike most Heath kits, as well as constructing the circuit board, there was a significant amount of mechanical assembly required related to the paddles. A lead weight is screwed to the bottom of the case and insulating paper glued to it. Just demonstrating it again, we can turn the unit on, adjust the side tone volume, the left paddle sends dots, the right sends dashes, and both paddles alternate between dots and dashes. And the left control adjusts speed. And pulling it will put it in hold or continuous transmit mode for tuning up a transmitter. I bought this unit on eBay in June of 2020. It was well used with a lot of dirt on the case. It was missing the rubber feet and power cable and didn't come with a manual, but the seller said it was working. I found some copies of the schematic and full manual on the internet which were helpful in restoring and testing the unit. The case was cleaned with soap and water and a toothbrush. It had some scratches and fading of paint, but no rust. It was also pretty dusty inside as the case has holes in it. It's not easy to fully disassemble the unit without removing wiring, so I cleaned the inside with a vacuum blower, paintbrush, toothbrush, and some Q-tips. I removed and cleaned the knobs and paddle handles. The knobs are not original. It would have had larger knobs that match the Heathkit SB and HW series, like this one. The original cheater plug type line cord has been lost. They're not easy to find today. For testing, I have a power cord with small alligator clips on it. You could solder in a cord or maybe replace the connector with a more modern IEC type. The chassis inside is engraved with a previous owner's amateur radio call sign and what I believe is a driver's license registration number as a theft deterrent. Since it's engraved under the fuse rating sticker, this would imply it was done when it was first built. The call sign WA6NHM is currently assigned to a ham in the Sacramento, California area. The unit came from California, not too far from Sacramento. Construction quality is pretty good. It was wired for the 10 to 35 words per minute speed range in normal or right-handed operation. The date codes on the ICs are all from 1975 and 1976, which would indicate that they're likely all original parts. After cleaning and inspection, it was powered up and it worked fine. There was a broken wire in the 12-volt DC power circuit that needed to be resoldered. 
I verified that it works for both positive and negative keying using a digital multimeter and a code practice oscillator. Some modifications have been made to the unit. The stereo headphone jack is now wired for connecting an external paddle and not headphones. This seems to be a relatively common mod as the paddles were not bad but not as good as say a bencher paddle like this one. The receiver audio jack was disconnected because the headphone jack was modified and no longer serves any purpose. The external key jack also connects to the keyer output. Maybe so the unit could be connected to two transmitters without changing connections. It's impressive that a full keyer could be implemented with just five integrated circuits. The HD 1410 was pretty advanced at the time featuring small size, line power, iambic operation, and decent built-in paddles. The main drawbacks were the lack of weighting control, advanced features like memories, and there were better paddles on the market, albeit at a significantly higher cost. It was the most popular of Heathkit's keyers, and by some accounts, one of the most popular keyers made by any manufacturer. They are commonly seen at auctions and ham fests, and many are still being used on the air today.